Brad, we went out and flew for the better part of 40 minutes. Uh, of course, it's kind of scuzzy out there, and it was, okay, watch out for this and watch out for that and do what you got to do because it was time to fly. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of assumed negativity about a Cub with a nose wheel. And when you're coming in hard, everything's full back, full stall landing in, and you stop both brakes, and you're on wet grass, and you're sliding this way, and you're sliding that way, and you're, and by the way, rudder covers it real well despite the brakes, and coming to a stop, and in no time at all, you cannot do that with a tail dragger. Uh, NX, it turned me. I'm, I'm, I'm not as much tail wheel as I used to be. Oh, my God. This, this is my admission. Just flipping amazing. Well, that's what we were going for, is we were going for a really great experience for guys flying the airplane. Cup Crafters has, has never done anything halfway. Um, we put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of our customer feedback. If you count up the experience that I've got and Pat Horgan, the president of the company, has and Jim Richmond has flying airplanes, we've got hundreds of years of experience there in the factory. And this is the accumulation of all that to build a really excellent airplane. And customers are finding that too. It's seeing market success because of the great flight characteristics on it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the flight in general. First of all, versus what I did, the proper technique on this is you know lock up the brakes, bring the power in, do brake release about the time when it's sliding anyway, and stick full back. I mean, just suck it back and let the nose come right on up, and you get to a point where you're comfy with where it is, and then you realize, holy smokes, we're still accelerating, you pull back more. And then you pull back more. On the second takeoff, I'm doing 30 alpha, and it's just insane. And we're still plenty of speed, plenty of energy. I mean, if we lost the engine there, I know I can dump it. I've got no problem. I'm not going to wind up falling out of the sky because I've been, you know, playing high alpha takeoffs. And it's just really lovely. The nice part is, is that the lateral visibility makes up for the fact that you got the nose sticking in the heavens. The other thing that is noticeable right from the beginning is that stick forces per se mechanically are by and large nil, but linear throughout but aerodynamically the airplane is telegraphing everything especially in pitch as pitch comes alive as you get airspeed and uh, more important as you trim it for the configuration you're looking for the force feedback and pitch is just right there similarly good in yaw not quite as good in roll but the nice part is is that yaw roll coupling is phenomenal so you can just tap rudder in the meantime roll is awfully responsive this is a faster rolling cub than i recall from the last time i flew with you guys so you've definitely cleaned up a few things the other part that was interesting was that you've got a surprisingly good result from the both steady bank and steady heading side slips in which the aircraft produces really good static abilities and across the board just awfully good uh, margins there in yaw, it's awfully positive and dynamic and a little bit lighter in roll, but you know, what the heck, you're looking for results there. But still enough that it's not going to bite you and it's certainly not going to bite you in the spiral. Stall wise, you've got to haul the nose to Valhalla to get this thing to break. And I mean, that one time we got a really decent break, what were we, about 40 degrees alpha? It's insane. Yeah, I was just pitching, pitching, pitching until I felt the buffet and then pitched a little more to break the stall but the airplane is fairly stall resistant in any sort of approach stall scenario. Power on stalls, uh, you were full power and we were you know, well in excess of, of 30 degrees, 35 degrees nose up. Um, I think you were feeling lots of feedback through the stick. You knew exactly how close to the stall braking you were. In a takeoff scenario where you're climbing out at those high alpha angles, the airplane's not gonna surprise you. It's not gonna surprise you and, and dump the nose and uh, put you in a dangerous situation. Everything's real predictable on it. Going back to the takeoffs, I think on the, the first takeoff, I think the airplane was ready to fly before you were. Oh, hell yeah. And then uh, on the second takeoff, you'd kind of figured that out and uh, you and the airplane were in sync and uh, we were off the ground and well under 200 feet. And you know, we're two reasonably sized guys and three quarters fuel, uh, not a cold day, no wind out here today and uh, we were still doing some, some very short takeoff and very short landing. At the end of the day, all that trans translates back into pilot safety. I mean, it's a very safe, it's a very predictable airplane. It's an airplane, like you mentioned, it's easy to get comfortable in. Any airplane can kill you, but this is an airplane where you gotta try pretty hard to get yourself in a dangerous situation. The thing I loved about it was the airplane manages so brilliantly under the circumstance. The other part that was very nice is that you know, uh, showing about 130 indicated, flat out, balls out at, what were we, 2,000 feet max, so in a 
crappy day. And the nice part about it is that one, visibility is outstanding there. I mean, your nose will just keep going down and down and down. And of course, it's that way for approach. And if you learn maybe even to fly a little bit of off axis in the takeoff, you're going to be able to see everything you need to see because the nose here is really thin and there's a really good visibility increase to drop off to either side. And that's another thing that's getting to be a bigger and bigger deal because, let's face it, places like this, your eyes got to be on a swivel. Absolutely. I mean, we had traffic all around us. You know, sun and fun, it's a show. We're only here four and a half miles away from the, the main show at South Lakeland. And it's a high wing airplane. So, you know, in turns, you have to be careful when you're, you know, looking ahead in turns and all that sort of stuff. But Cubs always have had great visibility. This Cub especially has good visibility. The window sills are low compared to your shoulder height. The windows themselves are clear span. There's not a bar in the middle, anything like that. And you're on the center line of the airplane. So you've got equal visibility to the left side and to the right side. Landing this thing is a joke. I mean, the smartest thing you can do is pretty much set it up in carrier mode. Um, by the way, you do have a pretty significant trim change. Of course, negative with flap. Trim it out, and you've got electric trim here, which is okay. I would up the trim rate a little bit, and I assume that can be done with your avionics shop if you want to. But you drop that last notch of flaps and sit in that 55, 60 knot area, and it's sweet. It just comes right out. And of course, you can be a little slower than that. But the nice part is you've got great visibility there. Settle it in. A little bit of a blast of power to energize the tail across the threshold, two or three feet off the ground. Suck the six stick back and just wait to catch the three wire. Yep. That's a super simple airplane to land. You know, and I've, I've flown, you know, lots sure. of Cessnas, lots of Cherokees, you know, lots Very of the nice. newer stuff, all those sorts of things. And truly, this airplane is one of the easiest airplanes to land. It's easier to land than a Cessna 172. And that's just the, the absolute truth about it. There's not a hard airplane to land. It's not a hard airplane to master. As we were going through the flight, there was three times where, uh, you know, I couldn't see your face, but I could hear the excitement in your voice and the laughter in your voice and having yeah. fun. And that's what I see in a lot of demo flights is people get in the airplane. They don't know quite what to expect. Maybe they're a little bit negative about the nose wheel on the Cub to start out with, but they get out of the airplane and they've had a whole lot of fun. They've got a great big smile on their face. And they say things like, you know, I've been a diehard tail guy, tailwheel guy for years and years and years. And uh, if I was in the market for one of these after flying this, I'd have to think long and hard if I wanted the airplane in the tailwheel configuration or the nose wheel configuration. Neat thing is that with this airplane here, you can swap it back and forth. So you're not locked into one or the other forever. The airplane flies just as well as a tail in the tailwheel configuration as it does in the nose wheel but it'll actually take off a little shorter and it'll land a lot shorter in the nose wheel configuration than it does in the tail wheel. Well, um, seriously, I'm, you know me, I'm a bit of a curmudgeon. Um, if there's something to critique, I'll get on it. And so far, the only thing I can reasonably bitch at is the trim rate and not by much. Overall, whoever did your nose wheel design on that Ioma beer, that was fun. That was really fun and uh, it's exquisitely done. Uh, you walk around these airplanes, you see what is functional, what isn't functional, what should work, what shouldn't work. And this just plain works. JPW. Brad, thank you very much. You're a fantastic tour guide to the airplane. And my only regret is I'd really like to have more time with it. And we got to arrange that. Anytime, we'll have you out there. Love to have you come visit us in Yakima. Deal. Thank you so much, sir. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon Fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the Record Out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com.